In this section, we are going to estimate the cost of building the raft slab or ring beams as they are referred to on the drawings. A raft slab is a type of foundation used in building construction that involves a large concrete slab that extends over the entire area of the building. The slab is typically reinforced with steel and thickened at the edges to form a beam around the perimeter. This type of foundation is used in areas with unstable or reactive soil conditions, where a conventional footing and foundation system may not be suitable. This slab is WBS item 2.1. There are two work lots under this, the ring beams and the garage floor slab. Originally, I included these as separate items, but in reality, they would be done during a single concrete pour. Therefore, there is no need to use WBS item 2.1.2. We'll just put a note that this has been included under WBS item 2.1.1. From the design, we can see that there are eight beams in total, five running vertical and three running parallel. From section view AA, we can see that the beams are 800mm deep and 650mm wide at the pedestals for the structural steel and 450mm wide along the beams. Each pedestal is a 650mm by 650mm wide box to support the structural steel. There is also a 150mm thick concrete floor slab with a steel mat inside. To build the raft slab, we need to budget for the formwork, reinforcement and pour. Formwork, reinforcement and pour are three key steps in the process of concrete construction. Formwork involves creating a temporary structure, often made of wood or metal, to hold the concrete in place until it sets and hardens. The formwork is designed to give the concrete its desired shape and structure, and may include walls, columns, beams and other features. The formwork is typically removed once the concrete has cured and is strong enough to hold its shape on its own. Reinforcement refers to the use of steel bars, wire mesh or other materials to strengthen the concrete and help it resist cracking and breaking under stress. Reinforcement is typically placed within the formwork before the concrete is poured. Pouring involves filling the formwork with concrete. This is typically done in one continuous pour to ensure that the concrete is of consistent quality throughout. Once the concrete has been poured, it is typically smoothed and leveled using various tools and techniques to ensure a smooth level surface. We will also need to allow for any wet curing for around seven days after the pour to ensure that the concrete does not crack. Importantly, it is worth noting that the design does not show any construction joints or saw cuts. We are going to assume that these are not required due to the size of the slab. We may wish to check this with the client and architect though. We need to check the overall quantities of the slab to allow for materials and to check time durations of the tasks. Calculating the quantities is pretty straightforward. We just look at each component of the slab and multiply the dimensions together to get the volume. This method obviously involves some overlap as the beams run through the pedestals and the ground floor slab covers the entire area. We are duplicating some of the measurements. However, it is better to always overestimate a little bit than to be short on volumes. Summing all of these volumes together, we get a total volume of concrete of 37.5 meters cubed. I've then added 15% to this to allow for wastage, giving us a total pour volume of 43.1 meters cubed. Next, we need to work out the quantities of formwork and reinforcement we need. There are several different ways we could calculate this, each involving different levels of effort. We could do a takeoff ourselves and count how many different length pieces of reinforcement we need. We could send the drawings to a supplier and get them to do the count and give us a quote and shop drawings. Or the easiest way is we could use a basic rule of thumb that concrete has around 20 kilograms of steel reinforcement per meters cubed. This would give us, for 40 meters cubed of concrete, we would have 0.8 tons of steel reinforcement. For the formwork, we need this along each beam at the pedestals. I'm just going to do a quick and simple calculation and take the overall length of the beams, multiply it by two for each side and add 20%. This gives us a total quantity of formwork of 65 meters squared. We'll use these quantities for calculating our labor, plant and materials requirements. Let's look at the labor productivities and resources for each task. Remember, we allowed for the excavation and prep work under the Earthworks WPS. For form work, we have 65 meters squared. A typical productivity is 40 meters squared per shift. Therefore, two laborers would take 1.5 shifts requiring 30 man hours. For reinforcement and steel fixing, we have 0.8 tons at a productivity of one ton per day for two laborers. This would require 20 man hours for steel fixing. For concrete placement, we have 43 meters cubed of concrete to pour. Our concreting crews would have five concreters and a typical productivity is 100 meters cubed per shift. However, we will allow a full shift for this task. Then to strip the formwork, we will allow the same amount of time as setting the formwork. And finally, for wet curing, we will allow one hour per day for one week for a laborer. I've added these new crew types to our labor model and put the appropriate number of hours under the labor section for all these different activities. The plant we need to use for the pour needs to be carefully considered. We will need a tooled ute for the duration of the works and also a concrete boom pump. 
For a pour this big, we would not be able to get access from a concrete agitator truck, so we need some sort of pump. As the pump will be wet hired, meaning it comes with two operators, I have not put it under the plant costs section, but under the subcontract costs. Next, we need to calculate all the material costs for the pour. This is relatively straightforward and we just need to calculate the quantity of the material needed by the rate. For the pour, we need concrete, reinforcement, formwork, a concrete washout bag to clean out the pump after the pour, and consumables. These are things like screws, nuts and bolts, and minor items we will need. It is easier just to allow a reasonable dollar figure for the entire pour. Entering all of this data into the pricing model, which is also attached to the course notes, we get a total cost for the pour of $27,249. We can see the bulk of this cost is actually in the materials, specifically concrete supply, which makes up over $11,000.